Hey guys, this is Chris Pajol. I'm a certified pedorthist and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about foot orthotics uh, and insoles. Uh, basically, what we're going to talk about in this is what are orthotics and what do they do for you and what kind of people need them. Also, we're going to kind of talk about how they work, uh, the structures in them that, that help them do what they need to do for you. And then things to look for if you're going to be buying some or if you already do buy some and some of the major differences between the two. So orthotics basically are a device to align the body, any part of the body. So a foot orthotic helps align the, align the joints in the foot. Uh, they have a lot of names. Sometimes people call them insoles or arch supports or inserts. Uh, but basically most of them do about the same thing. Orthotics is more of a medical device. But basically what we're doing here is helping a joint align or a body part be in better alignment um, that's more or less what an orthotic does as far as other things that they do they also help cushion the foot and help support the arch and things like that it's not always about pushing the foot one way or the other it's just to give some support under the arch and some extra cushion if you need that people who could benefit from them well the number one person is definitely somebody with an injury if, if you've got something like Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis or uh, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction or some type of issue that you're having in your lower extremities, um, foot orthotics can be a big part of that equation during your rehabilitation process. So uh, they can supplement for poor biomechanics. Uh, poor biomechanics would be overpronating, underpronating, supinating. Basically, anytime your foot is moving in or out, excessively you can have some injuries and the foot orthotics can kind of help those while you do your physical therapy or whatever you need to do or the strength training to, to build up those muscles so you don't need the orthotics. Uh, patients that have had surgery sometimes will need them for a short period of time through the recovery process to help support and align a joint and then people who want to just supplement their shoes and add a little more support to their shoes. Uh, sometimes one shoe is too supportive and they, they bump it down the shoe, but then it's not enough. So an, an orthotic or an insole can kind of be that interim where it adds a little bit more support to the shoe or a little bit more cushion to the shoe without having to step up to the next shoe. So talking about shoes, they definitely affect how you're going to choose your shoe. Uh, on the shoe type, basically, most orthotics generally work best in a neutral type shoe. Uh, any stability shoe or motion control shoe generally is going to probably tilt your foot too much with the orthotic. Not always, but rarely do I ever see a properly made or fabricated orthotic that also needs the help of a real specialized shoe. So um, keep that in mind. If you're kind of walking on the outside of your foot or you see the wear pattern is wearing too much on the outside, sometimes the shoe and the orthotic together can be too much. Also, the fit's gonna change a little bit. You definitely want to make sure that the inside of the shoe comes out, the, that insole is removable, and then you're going to put whatever orthotic or insole you buy in it. Um, but sometimes it's still a little thicker than the original, so you want to make sure that the thickness is somewhat the same. Uh, that way it doesn't take up too much space. If it does, then you might have to go to a little wider shoe or, or half a size longer. But definitely take that insole out if you're going to be putting one in. That helps keep your heel kind of in the pocket of the back of the shoe to make sure that you're not... Uh, slipping in the back. Things to look for. Uh, sizes are probably my biggest pet peeve with some orthotic companies. Uh, Superfeet is, is one that I'll point out. It's a great company, great orthotic, uh, but the problem with some of their, their sizing is like for the women's sizes, for example, it goes from six and a half to eight. So that's a pretty big variance between sizes there. And a lot of times a lot of times you might be a seven and a half or an eight, but the orthotic is really meant to also fit six and a half, so that arch is gonna be a little shorter than it needs to be. So I always look for an orthotic that's got a lot of different sizes, something like that goes seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, and those are different sizes, kind of the way shoes are sized. And so just, just make sure there's lots of varieties. If there's only five sizes, I would look elsewhere, unless you get lucky and your foot just happens to fit right in that size. And, and that kind of brings us to our next point is make sure that the orthotic is comfortable when you're trying it on. Uh, you want, you should have pretty much immediate comfort and fit. You don't want to leave the store having it be, hurt your foot or be uncomfortable, and then you're kind of thinking, oh, I'll adapt to it. There, there is definitely a little bit of a transition period, but generally 
it still should be comfortable. So try a few on and, and make sure you find one that fits your foot well. And then look for something with high quality materials. Sometimes this is hard to determine in the store, but something that breaks down very quickly, uh, generally stay away from them. Don't keep rebuying them because there's stuff out there that can last a long time and they're not gonna wear out quickly. Hard versus soft orthotics. So there's a lot of different orthotics. Some have plastic, some are all foam. And that's kind of the, the, the difference between like say a Dr. Scholl's versus a, a higher quality insole like Superfeet or Power Steps. Um, just basically, it, some of it's gonna be preference, some of it's gonna be condition dependent. So depending on what you're trying to treat, if you're trying to treat a specific condition, you may need something with a little bit firmer arch to help stop the foot from doing whatever it's doing. So um, you've got to kind of take that into account. You also got to consider your foot mechanics and kind of what they're doing. So if you have a really high arch and you're an under pronator, you need more cushion, less support. If you have a really low arch and you over pronate, then you need something a little stiffer to help support that foot more. So depending on kind of your foot type will also depend on whether you're going to have a harder orthotic or a softer orthotic. But most people generally prefer the softer and there's been a lot of studies done over the years and most people prefer comfort wise the soft ones and they really haven't found a huge difference in the outcomes and the injury rates with soft ones versus hard ones. So I would always err on the softer side than the hard side if you're going to be buying any. Lots of different brands out there. Uh, I've named a few already, but really the differences between them are going to be sizing. That's going to be big. Some are sized differently than others. Uh, some of them are more of a support and corrective device, whereas others are more of a comfort and cushion device. So support and corrective device is going to be more like your soles, the power step, super feet, foot creations, the ones we make. Uh, the sole, uh, soft sole, they're kind of in between. But the Spencos and the Dr. Scholl's are more of a comfort cushion device. Um, they're there not so much to align your foot, but just to kind of aid. Uh, they'll definitely do a better job at cushioning the shoe than what comes with it. Uh, the, the overall shape obviously is unique to each and an individual brand. Uh, some of the shapes are more aggressive in the arch. Some have a tighter heel cup. And that's going to be something you have to cut, just kind of play with and, and find something that fits your foot. Uh, this is very similar to running shoes. You, you may have one guy that thinks Asics are the best or New Balance are the best or Brooks are the best, but a lot of it comes down to your foot type, the types of terrain you're running on, and orthotics or insoles are pretty much the same way. So just yeah, don't always listen to other people's opinions. You've got to kind of do the trial and error process and find what works best for you. And then obviously another thing is the materials. The materials are very different between these different brands. Some are more cushioned, some are more hard, and so that's going to be different. And again, that's going to be kind of uh, dependent on your condition, your foot type, your type of running, your weight, your height, all of that. So uh, the, that's really the big difference. There's not really that any one brand is better than the other. It's just that one brand may be better than somebody else. I know a lot of people who buy the $10 Dr. Scholl's and do really well and they have no issues with it. So uh, it just depends on what you need. And then kind of the last topic we'll, we'll talk about is Custom versus over-the-counter. So obviously customs, they're, they're one-off, meaning they're made by a cast or a scan or whatever it may be, and they're made to fit just you and your left and right feet individually. So there's a big cost difference because they're not being mass produced. So they are a little bit more expensive. And then the material quality is gonna generally be much higher. Uh, higher quality materials are gonna last longer. They're gonna absorb more shock. So you're paying a little bit more for that. And then obviously the fit accuracy and, and the ability to meet your individual needs as far as wedging uh, and whatever specialized things that need to be added due to maybe an injury or deficiency while you are doing that recovery process, uh, the customs are going to definitely excel at that. Uh, but most people don't need custom. It, it's sometimes more of a budget thing. They're definitely going to work better, but a lot of things can be accomplished like plantar fasciitis. For instance, most of the time the over-the-counters work just as well because it's only say 20 or 30 percent of what you're trying to accomplish, but you still have got the strengthening and the stretching and all that stuff you've got to do. And so getting the custom device isn't really going to give you that much more of an advantage. You still got to do all the other stuff. There's really no shortcut when it comes to that. So kind of to summarize, make sure you need them. A lot of people buy them just to buy them and in my opinion, it's not necessary. There's, there's no study that proves if you wear them, you're really going to prevent anything. So you're not really solving a whole lot by, you're not guaranteeing you're not going to be injured by wearing them, but you're usually not going to hurt yourself. But just, just make sure that you need them. 
Uh, also, make sure that you, you do think about your th shoe sizing and also that your shoe type a little bit when you're considering buying orthotics and, and buy the right tool for the job. So if, if, again, you have that high arch, you need more cushion, buy something with more cushion. If you have a low arch, you need something with more arch support, buy something with more arch support. Uh, and then don't make them a crutch. Uh, that, that's a big thing that I'll advocate for is, is the orthotics, like, like the first slide, they, they are kind of a brace. And so you don't want to make sh you want, don't want to make them too hard or too supportive where your foot becomes a complete crutch to it, and then you can't function without it. Um, again, there's always going to be other things that you need to do in lieu of just the orthotics. So just make sure you're doing those other things to strengthen and get back to more of a quote unquote natural state. Um, so, well, thanks a lot for listening to this. And if you have any other further questions, uh, you could email me at footcreations@gmail.com. Or you can visit us at footcreations.com to see our products or contact us through, us through the website. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.